it's said that we don't choose the saints, the saints choose us. And certainly I've found this a number of times in my life where obscure saints somehow end up coming up, references to them uh, over and over in my life. One day a woman gave me a holy card of this woman I'd never heard of, Sister Elizabeth of the Trinity, who at that time was already beatified, was soon going to be canonized. And it had a, a relic of hers, a, a second-class relic. It's a little piece of cloth that had belonged most likely to her habit or was touched to her body. As I started reading about her, I just fell in love with this amazing ways in which God had worked through her to really draw souls to contemplation and to a love of the Holy Trinity. She was born in 1880 in France. Uh, her father was a military man. He died when she was quite young. Her mother then raised her and her sister. Actually, first I should say she had a bad temper. So I, I like that because I had a bad temper at one point in my life. And when she received her first Holy Communion, it all changed. She had a much greater self-control, self-restraint. Uh, starting to have a desire to enter the Carmelite convent. But before that, she went to dances and she had friends and she helped the sick. And she was very lived a very active life and loved to travel and was very much like so many young people today. But she also had this deep interior uh, love of the Lord that kept pulling at her. And even though her mother greatly uh, was against it, she finally said, I'm going to the Carmelite convent. It would be a Carmelite cloistered sister, which means she would never leave again. And she went in and she uh, was immediately confronted with all sorts of different trials and tribulations, but also a deep, a deep draw towards contemplative prayer, towards that prayer of silence, spending more and more time with the Lord. And the Lord helped her to overcome many fits and, and, and problems and to have a deep love of, of the Trinity and a deep understanding of the Trinity. And so she began to write letters and even especially to her sister and to other people. She uh, wrote a great, a great work on the Trinity and a great prayer to the Trinity that's still studied by scholars to this day. And she really started to break open that mystery or more so created a door with her writings into the mystery of the Trinity that each one of us is called to. Eventually she had such a relationship with the Lord that she felt called to change her name and ask that the sisters call her Laudum Gloriae. She's the name that God himself gave her, which means praise of glory. Eventually it was found out that she sadly had uh, Addison's disease and was dying. And she said these words, I think that in heaven my mission will be to draw souls by helping them to go out of themselves in order to cling to God by a whole, holy, simple, and loving movement, and to keep them in the great silence which will allow God to communicate himself to them and to tra transform them into himself. From this, she really prepared her life. Her last words were, I am going to light, to love, to life. I am going to light, to love, to life. I encourage you to listen to and read her writings. I encourage you to come to get to know this amazing saint. She's one I appeal to every time I make my holy hour or try to do any type of contemplative prayer. I ask for her intercession, for her to intercede for me. She said she especially wanted to help other souls to enter a deep place of intimacy with the Lord. And she's one I can highly recommend because she, through her intercession, has helped me and so many others. St. Elizabeth of Trinity, pray for us.